You know, I want to share a little bit about this teaching today God gave me, it, it, the prophetic act, prophetic anointing. You know, we're going to talk about prophecy and about the anointing. But in that teaching, he talks about the Spirit of God. He talks about impartation, activation, and then the manifestation. And I believe right now we're in the manifestation of what God wants to do. And what the Spirit of God was sharing today as the ministers were in the, we were in the green room praying today, the manifestations are going to be tangible things. Not only the spiritual things, because we know that God, as soon as we become born again, He fills us up with all His spiritual things. We just got to activate them once we start speaking His Word. But I believe the manifestation, not only in divine healing, not only in the blessings manifesting in the natural uh, the provisions, but everything that the world says that we don't have, that the world says we d they don't have, we're going to have it. But through all this, it's because God wants to be glorified. God wants the world to know He did not leave them. He's still here. How many know we left Him? He didn't leave us. But He loves us so much, He knows that every knee is going to bow. And so as we were worshiping, I got a revelation. As we were worshiping, I got a vision. And so God is saying that the manifestation of this anointing is going to begin in this place, right? And so I'm going to do what I was instructed to do. Amen? And so in the name of Jesus, the manifestation of God's blessing. In the name of Jesus, the manifestation of God's blessing. In the name of Jesus, the manifestation of God's blessing. And in the name of Jesus, the manifestation of God's blessing. Jesus, the name above every name. Brother, sister, come here. In the name of Jesus, the manifestation of God's blessing. In the name of Jesus, the manifestation of God's blessing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to share a little about that in this teaching today, but those of you that are in the front row, that's where God says. He says, touch those individuals in the front row. So next time you feel like sitting in the front, sit there. Because even though all of you will get it, there's something about the order of God when he does stuff. The order that he wants to do things. And he knows the hearts of his people. Amen. And so I want to remind you and I want to encourage you that God is still on the throne, saints. He's still in charge. His promises are still sure. Just be, and come on, I'll, we can, I can, I'll raise my hands. Just because we think that he's not going to do it doesn't mean he won't do it. He already wrote it down. And he said, if I write it down, I got to do it. He goes, just line up with me, he says. But I don't understand, Lord. Just line up with me. But months have passed. Years have passed. Just line up with me. Because heaven and earth, all the natural things, all the time will pass, but not God's word. It will come to pass. And so this is what we need to believe today. And I believe God wants to share with us in this teaching today that he wants to do these things. And so today... I want, to, I want to share with you a little bit about this prophetic anointing and, and what is prophecy and what is the anointing, amen? And uh, I, uh, I got this book called The Prophet's Manual by John Eckhart. A lot of good stuff, saints. If you are a prophet or you want to know how to prophesy, this is the book to get. I tell you, I, I've been learning a lot from here. I'm going to share a little bit that with you in here, but I'm also going to share what God gave me when I was reading this. Because how many of us know that God... God says that, that, that he talks about that um, if you prophesy in part, you will know in part. So what, brother, what the Lord gave brother was awesome, but there's some stuff that he didn't give him that he gave to me. And there's some stuff he'll give to, he, he, he'll give to you when you read this. And so I want to share those both with you because guess what? God gets all the glory, right? Amen. It's not about man, what he wrote down. It's whatever God wrote down, the Spirit of God gave it to him to wrote down. So it all belongs to God. But God is going to add to what he said today. And, and listen, saints, I want to share this with you right now. You automatically, because you're hearing this word of God, have been imparted and activated to do what God says you are called to do. 
You may say, well, brother, I don't know the Lord that much, or, you know, I really haven't been serving him, or, you know, I kind of pulled back a little. It doesn't matter. Once God activates you, because I'm going to show you in Scripture, it's already been. As soon as you become born again, it's already been imparted. It's already been activated, and we're going to see the manifestation of it. It's too late. It's, if, you're, if you're not born again, get born again. But if you're born again, you already have all these. So what's going to happen? Well, you know, it's in us, but it hasn't been activated. And we're going to see it being activated. And I believe by you coming and those of you on live stream, by those of you who have been hearing the word of God, and I'm speaking here at Genesis, as you've been hearing the word of God, God has been building you up. He's been activating that in you. He's been showing you, hey, look, you can have what the word of God says. Sometimes we don't think we can have it because of our education or our background. But God says, all you need to do is be born again, and it belongs to you. So today, and, and at the end, and, and this teaching, we're going to make some declarations too. But I'm going to share with you right now, the word of God that is given to you today has already been activated. You will see the manifestation of it. Amen. 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 And so let's, let's begin in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. First, before we even start that, I want to thank God for our tech people. I mean, they get the scriptures up there. They get the song lyrics up there. I love these guys, man. They're the best, amen? And so I just thank God for them that they too will be the first to receive the manifestation of what God is releasing, amen? And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5 says, And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration. Say demonstration, saints. Because I believe God is going to start doing this in our lives. But in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. That's what's going to start happening through this manifestation, the power of God. God is making himself known to the world, prophetic anointing manifested. So what is prophetic? What, what is the prophetic anointing? Well, what is prophecy? Now, what I'm going to share with you is a few things here of prophecy, but that's not even all of it. That's just a few things. Prophecy is so much, but I'm going to just share a few things with you that the Spirit of God revealed to me. But that doesn't mean that's all that there is. But prophecy, prophecy is, God, is God's will revealed to his people. He wa God wants you to know what's going on. He wants you to know what's going on. It's God speaking his will through his people. So he wants to speak through you to his people, saints. And prophecy builds up and prophecy strengthens you. I don't know about you, but when I'm here, I feel strengthened. I feel like I'm being built up. I mean, when I walk out of here, and I'm talking about not when I'm giving a message, but when I'm hearing the word in myself in this place. I walk out of here feeling good. I'm, I'm encouraged. I'm built up. I'm strengthened to know that God is still on the throne and he's going to do what he says he's going to do. So prophecy is all these things and more, but God wants you to know that. Now, what is the anointing? Because God says today there's a prophetic anointing. What is the anointing? The anointing is God's power manifesting on this earth upon you, saints. When you see... The power of God, that's the anointing of God manifesting. It's also, it manifests, God's power manifesting on the earth, manifesting through his servants. The anointing, and there's, there's three things that, you can, that I've experienced personally with the anointing. The anointing, I've experienced the anointing in times of worship. Like today, it happened today. You know, the, the worshipers, especially my brother Lamar Green, he brings us into God's presence. That's what worshipers are supposed to do. They bring you to God's presence. And what happens when you come into the presence of God? Well, what happened to me today is that I receive revelation. I receive revelation of what God instructed me to do. And I also receive a vision. He showed me exactly who to go to and who to anoint. And so when we, when we come up, we, we come in a time of true worship where God is being worshiped, not man's talents, but God is being worshiped. God gets us revelation, vision. We become calm. Sometimes we come into a service and we're, you know, things are going on in our lives and we don't know what direction to turn or we don't know how to do things. All of a sudden you come under the anointing of God in worship and it just calms you down. You finally can take a breath and say, oh, yeah, God's going to meet my needs. He's going to take care of things. And in and, and that time, it also, and saints, deliverance even happens in a time of worship. God will set you free. 
You won't have to go to no doctors. You won't have to take no medicine. All of a sudden you go, something happened when I was in worship. I feel free. No more aches. No more pains. No more oppression. That's what God does in worship. That's why, that's why it's so important, saints. And, and when, I'm, when we're up here reading the lyrics, God says, read those lyrics like you love them. Because you may never read them again. And so I was just worshiping him and thanking him for who he was. And, and, and also this anointing can come through the laying on of hands like we do here at Genesis. And the laying on of hands, and I'll give you an example that those of you that come up here, there's times where I'm ministering the word of God. And I know all the ministers same is that we'll anoint you and we'll feel a heat. We'll feel the heat of God manifesting on you. And I'll feel it on me. And God says, that is the anointing. And what does the anointing do? It does the work of the Spirit of God. Or sometimes you get slain in the Spirit. Some of you that seen people go down, they're getting, their, they're getting their miracle. Amen? And so God wants you to know, saints, it's also through the spoken word of God, like what's happening right now. God's speaking his word to you. He's manifesting his word to you. And all of God's word is anointed, saints. All of it. Amen. And so the word spoken as God's prophetic word is being spoken, the anointing comes down and it manifests. Remember, we read we read at the opening service that the demonstration of the spirit and power, God's power. So when the word of God is being spoken, the, the anointing comes down they, and the spirit, the spirit of man. Now, now it's the spirit of man receiving from God. Now your spirit man is receiving from God, removing all doubt, removing all fear, removing all worry. Now heaven is on earth. God's presence, his power, who he is, has filled you, saints. That's why it's so important to have the anointing in your life. The Bible says the, 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 the let, it says the, 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 praise the Lord. It says God is good. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I, that scripture will come. That scripture will come. And in Numbers chapter 14, 21, guess what it says? All the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. And that's upon you. And all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. When the anointing comes down, his power. Prophecy is the word. The word is prophecy. Revelations 19, 10 says, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You may not be called to be a prophet, but you can prophesy, saints. I want everybody here, as a sign that they believe that, raise your hand that you can prophesy. You may say, bro, I've never prophesied. Well, today you're going to start. Everybody's hands up. Whose hand didn't get up? I'm going to come over there and pray for you. Everybody's hands up. You guys want to prophesy? Bro, you want to prophesy? Get your hand up. You don't want a prophet? There you go, brother. There you go. God wants all. See, the Bible says all the gifts are us for free. They're free. He's given them to all of us. So I, I don't know about you, but before I knew how to prophesy, I probably wouldn't have wanted it because I didn't know what it was or how to deal with it. But saints, prophecy will set you free and set the people free. And there's no greater freedom. There's no greater feeling than to be free. There's a, there's a song Ron Canoli sings. He goes, I'm free. He goes, I'm, I'm free. He goes, I'm, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Amen. That's why I sing. I'm free. Amen. That's why I'm happy because I'm free. There's a freedom that you can't, you can't earn. It's a, it, he just gives it to you. And prophecy does that, saints. Jesus is prophecy. Amen. And so, so you may not be called to be a prophet, but you can prophesy. And I'm going to show you in Scripture you can prophesy. In Acts chapter 2, verse 18, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they, that's you, shall prophesy. Amen. I'm not saying that God is saying it. So if you, got, if you don't want to prophesy, then okay. It's one of the gifts that will be there that you'll never operate in. Because God says he's given us all gifts pertaining to life and godliness. And remember Paul was talking about covet all the gifts, but best of all the prophecy. But he says covet all. In other words, want all of them. We can all operate in every gift God gave us. I mean, they're all good because the Bible says God only gives good things. So if, he given you, if he's given you a list of things that you can speak, speak it because it's a good thing. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 31, it says, For you, you can all prophesy one by one. 
So you raised your hands, you stood in agreement, the word of God is spoken unto you. Now we're going to let God prophesy through you when he leads you. But when he does, it's going to be to build up. It's going to be to edify. It's going to be to warn. How many of us know that we need to be warned? We need to be on guard. We need to be alert. Amen? That's what prophecy does. We're going to see that in Scripture today. All these things that you didn't know about prophecy that is a benefit to you, that now you know. Say, Lord, he'll, he'll show me how to be prepared. He'll show me how to be warned. He'll warn, he's warning me what's going on around that corner. So I better, I better be ready. I better be prepared. I better be alert. And, and prophecy will build us up. God doesn't bring you down. You go to some place, and I don't know, I'm not saying that they're not, or I'm not naming anything, but if you go into a place that's supposed to be a place where God is, and you are not built up, don't go there no more. Because God builds up. God never puts you down. God will never put you down. If God wants to talk to you about something that's not right, he'll talk to you personally in your time. And the only time you'll only time you'll have a servant of God come and tell you those things that, that he's already been talking to you about is because you haven't been listening and God loves you so much that he wants you to listen. That's how much he loves you. I wish that none should perish. And God wants your life to be a life of freedom. And how many of us know that condemnation and guilt and shame is not being free? But God wants us free, amen? So uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 31 says, For all can prophesy one by one. Let God speak life through you, and let God speak, speak breakthroughs through you. Prophetic anointing breaks every yoke. Did you know that, that the prophetic anointing breaks every yoke? Isaiah 10, 27 says, And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. You want something destroyed? Speak the word of God. Saints, you have received this anointing. You say, wait, bro, I don't know. I just accepted the Lord, or I, I, I don't know. I don't feel anointed. Well, you've already been anointed, God said. When you became born again, I put all that in you. And it says it in 1 John 2, 27. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. So the anointing already is in you. And you want to know how to get that anointing to start operating? Get in the word. Start speaking the word. Start spending time with Jesus. Amen. Amen? Amen? And you'll start seeing that a little by little, more by more. And then all of a sudden, you'll see the power of God. But saints, I want to let you know that we are in a prophetic season. That means prophecies, we're going to see prophecies fulfilled. Uh, Pastor and Fred and I were talking in the, in the office earlier today about a book that we received from Mar Cirillo, and it's a, a warfare book, right? And this book was, what, 15, 20 years we were talking about. And since he had, and we're reading it now, and it's happening now. So prophecy is being fulfilled now. Since you are part of prophecy today, I don't care if you're if you're in your early twenties or thirties, you are part of prophecy. It's happening right now. Others may have gone before you and prepared this, but God says you're coming in and you're you're reaping the benefits of it. You're not going to say, I, I encourage all you young, you, you my brothers and sisters that are in their thirties and under. This is your time for such a blessing of revelation of God in your life, the victories of God in your life. Don't say, well, wait, I have to wait till I'm, you know, older like my parents, and then I'll start really knowing the Word of God. You can learn it right now because others have gone before you, and if you will receive from them, you won't have to go climb them mountains. And we're going to see, and we're going to see today, you won't have to go through stuff. I remember the founder of this church, Rita Felix, she used to say, brother, I'm sharing these things with you because she would counsel Mike. Apostle Michael and myself, she goes, I'm sharing these things with you so when they come before you, you'll know what to do. And many things we have escaped because of that. Many things we have not allowed the enemy to draw us into because we remember those times. And God says that is what the older ones are supposed to do for the younger ones, not just saying, oh, they're going to learn just, I, just, just like I had to learn. No way. I want them to know it so that, and, and the greatest thing is every generation that is born, God gives them a new vision. And see, if we, we, as those that go before them, we help pull that vision out of them. Instead of saying, oh, you know, we, you know, we don't, we, uh, those dreams that you're having about, you know, great things happening. No, that can't be of God. It's not our vision, so why should we believe it? But if God gives them the vision for souls, that God's going to give them an idea for souls. Stand with them, saints. 
Encourage them. Build them up. We're going to see that today in, in this teaching. But God wants you to know right now we're in a prophetic season. Prophecies are being released upon this earth. Prophecies spoken years ago, months ago, are manifesting now. If you there, if you there have been, in, you then have been imparted today with the seed of prophecy. Because all can prophesy. This is the prophetic anointing. I shared this earlier at the beginning of the service. This is the prophetic anointing. Impartation, activation, and manifestation. Well, what is the impartation? It's prophecy. What is the activation? The anointing of God brings the activation. And what is the manifestation? Together there is a, to get, with impartation and activation, together there is a manifestation of God's will, God's plan, God's purpose, His healing, His restoration, God's power making things right, saints. Because we know right now things aren't right. But God said, look, I'm going to make things right. This anointing's coming down. It's already been imparted. It's already been activated. The manifestation is about to happen. Impartation, activation, manifestation. 1 John 3, 6. Here it is. This is Paul speaking. I planted Apollo's water, but God gave the increase. I planted I imparted. Apollos watered, activated it. But God gave the increase, the manifestation of it. Now, when God gives us something, he always lines it up with his word. You may say, I never heard a prophetic anointing. What does that have to do with it? There it is right there. You just saw it right now. In this season of prophecy, God wants to manifest, show himself to the world through signs and wonders. And he has chosen you, you saints. He has chosen you. You have been anointed by God. Did you know that? You have been anointed by God. 1 John 2.20 says, You have an anointing from the Holy One. You have an anointing from Him, the Holy One. John 15.16 says, You did not cho chose me, but I chose you. And what? Appointed you. Another teacher says, anointed you. God is making it very evident here, saints. It's time for us to start speaking the word and believing God's going to do it. Don't speak it and say, ooh, I didn't feel nothing. Maybe it's not happening. I wasn't in church. I, didn't, uh, I can't say it. You can say it wherever you are. If God gives you something, you say it, and God will bring it to pass. Amen. I believe that's happening right now. Amen. When you become born again, the spirit of Jesus Christ lives in you. Do you believe that? Amen. And what is Jesus in Revelation 19.10? Spirit of prophecy. So you already have it in you. You can, you can, you can prophesy. Speak God, God speaking through you. You can speak life. Listen to this. You can speak life to those dead bones. You can speak life to those dead dreams. You can speak life to those dead hopes. Ezekiel did, remember? It's in, I, you can read it on your own, but it's in Ezekiel 37, 1 through 10. Remember, God tells him, he goes, can these bones live? He goes, only you know, Lord. He goes, they can. He goes, you prophesy to them. And he said that when he prophesied to them, the breath came back into them. I, I, heard, I heard somebody talking about this one time, and he was saying that God, when God gave him this, that, 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 uh, that uh, we could speak to these dry bones, right, to come alive. He saw his son. He goes, huh. And at the time, son was born again, but he wasn't really doing for God, right? Spiritually dead bones, right? Wasn't doing anything. And God says, breathe life into him. So I'm encouraging you, those, uh, read Psalms, uh, Ezekiel 37, verse 1 through 10, if you want your family members to come back. And say, Lord, I'm going to speak life unto me. And it says in that same scripture, I, I believe it's in verse 10, that they came alive. Come on, everybody has a destiny for God. Everybody has a mission and assignment from God. When God created us, he gave all of us a mission and assignment. Some of us, everything's at God's appointed time. Now, if God gives you revelation out of Scripture like he gave this individual, then that means it's time for that individual. So be encouraged right now. God is on the throne, saints. He's on the move. Amen. You, can man you, saints, God is saying, can manifest resurrection life because Jesus, the name above every name, dwells in you. He is your source. He is your power. And he is the, 
everlasting life. Call those things that are dead to live again, and it will be so, God is saying. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, for the word of God is living and powerful. Amen? God has put in you his spirit. Jesus has anointed you. The Holy Spirit wants to manifest God's power through you. The same Holy Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Saints, you are well able. You have the right spirit. You have God's spirit dwelling in you. That's what, that's what, the, that's what God said, said about Joshua and Caleb. I believe it's in Numbers 14, 24. He said, they got the right spirit. He goes, I could use them because they believe in me. They have faith in me. You have faith in God. But sometimes we don't see this, saint, because a lot of times, and we all, we all fall short of that, a lot of times we listen to the world and we look at the world, what's happening in the world, and we get our eyes focused on them and off of God. But then when God starts reading the word to us and we start hearing, he says, I have anointed you. You can prophesy too. You can resurrect the dead bodies too. You can call those things that be not as they were. You are well able. You have a good spirit in you. You have the right spirit in you. And then we start thinking and say, wait a minute. Why am I talking like the world when I can talk like God and say what God says and see things change? Sometimes things don't change because of us. Could, one person can change. They, we were saying it today. The atmosphere is changing now because the Spirit of the Lord is there. God's only going to be where, we want, where, he, where he's welcomed. I want him to be welcoming me all the time. From the time I get up, from the time I sleep, I want him talking to me. I want him showing me things. I want him, and, and, and say, he's, he's been sharing with me so, many, so much lately that he loves me, that he loves me, that he loves me. It's like, Thank you, Lord, because I truly believe that love is what pulls us out of doubt, what pulls us out of uh, questioning God, what pulls us out of, um, can I do it? Whatever God called me to do, can I do it? But we are well able. Who do you think put that in Joshua to say, we are well able? God put it in him. And God is saying to you, you are well able. I put my spirit in you, the spirit of prophecies in you, the spirit to build up, the spirit to encourage, and the spirit to change the atmosphere is inside of you. Just speaking, God says, I'll back you up. God watches over his word to perform it. We just got to say it. And every one of you in here can do that. You just got to do it. And you will do it. And you're doing it. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Saints, you are well able. You have the right spirit, and God's spirit is dwelling in you. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3 says, Prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. You know what that word edification means? It means encouragement. It means encouragement. That word exhortation, it means to build up. And that word comfort, it means assurance. God said, look, I'm going to assure you that things are going to be all right. I don't know about you, but that would comfort me. Yes. And when God says, look, I, I need you to start building up the people of God first. Come on, how many of us know we got to be built up? How are they going to see the light of Jesus Christ in us if we're not built up, if we're not encouraged? I, I don't know about you, but I need to be encouraged every day by the Spirit of God. Yes. And so God is saying to look, when you're encouraged, and when, you're, and when you're built up, and when, you're, and when you are assured of what I'm going to do for you, oh, my goodness, you'll prophesy to somebody else. Amen. Say, what I got, I'm going to share with you. Amen. Prophecy prepares you. Also, it also prepares you. It warns you to be alert and to be on the guard. Prophecy will rescue you, resurrect you, and save multitudes. Did you know that? Prophecy was, if God... Has When God has you prophesy, prophesy because it will save multitudes. That's in Ezekiel 37. It says that when he prophesied, he said he saw an exceedingly great army. And so prophecy, is, it, and, we're gonna, it, and we'll read it right now. It's not just for you and your family. Let it start there, but let God use you to prophesy to the generation. 
This is a generation. You guys, you young, 30 and under, you're that generation. And this is how we're supposed to speak to them. Because sometimes, they, oh, they're look at they're rebellious. They're not doing what I would. By their age, I was doing this and I was doing that. What's wrong with God? Said, why are you talking like that? I didn't anoint you and called you and put my word in you so that you could tear down. I want you to build up. And so this is this is what we need to do, saints. And I believe it. In order to do this, we really need to have God's love in our heart. Because come on, it's easy to pray for your brothers and sisters, this young generation. When they're saved. What about the ones out there in the world that are doing what they're not supposed to do? Aren't they not your responsibility too? And so, so, you know, we need to have that change of God's heart in our lives. When we see them out there doing that, immediately start praying for them. <coughs> because light will overcome darkness. See, they, you, you know, you, you may see that they may be in darkness because maybe you haven't spoken light to them yet. And I'm not talking about, you don't have to go up to them. You can, if the Spirit of God leads you, go up to them and start talking to them one-on-one. But I'll tell you right now, you can be driving in your car, and you can see them doing stuff, and you stretch forth your hand and speak the word, and you can be another mile away, and God will still touch their hearts. Because there's no distance in prayer with God. God watches over his word. This is, the, this is the power of God inside of you, inside of us, that we haven't been using enough. A few months ago, God told me, he goes, my people aren't asking enough. They're not asking enough. Oh, Lord, bless me. Bless my family. Amen. God said, you're not asking me enough. Get some detail in there. You know, we're, God created us to be unique, different. And there's some of us here that have details that, that God wants us to speak out so they can start happening. Amen. And so it's not just for you and your family, but it's, let it start there. But let God use you to prophesy to this generation. And here's an example. We can speak life. We can speak healing. We can speak that this generation will fulfill their destiny. We can stand in the gap for them and pray for them. We can release God's prophetic anointing upon them. Come on now. Why can't we say, Father, in the name of Jesus, upon that young man, upon that young lady, I I release the impartation and the activation and the manifestation of your will upon their lives. Come on. Why can't we do that? Now, listen to this. This is why you can do it. Say, and I'm talking about it. us, the older generation, the more mature generation. We've been there. You know those, we know the tactics and the lies that the enemy brings. We, to pull, we are to pull down those strongholds of deceit, amen, because we know he wants to deceive them. We ought to ask God to build a hedge of protection, of fire, of God's anointing around them. This is the reason we went through what we went through. But God brought us out. He is faithful, and he will never leave us nor forsake us. Now let's pray, rebuke, pull down, and help this generation to build and to plant God's word. That's what we're supposed to do, saints. If you want one assignment, ask God to show you who to pray for. And pray that, that God will build a hedge of protection around them. That they will fulfill their destiny. And that every attempt of the enemy in their lives will be destroyed. Come on, why can't you pray like that? What you went through, what God brought you out, it made you more smarter, more wiser, more sensitive to his spirit. I don't know about you, but it made me more sensitive to his spirit, the things I had to go through. Well, now we know what they have to go through. Say, Lord, quicken their spirit. Make them, let their spirit be sensitive to your spirit. Give them, anoint their spiritual eyes that they would see the plans of the enemy. Give them boldness to declare the word of God with power and authority. How come we can't pray like that for them? Because we know how to pray. And then God will honor the prayers of us and give it to them. And they'll run this race and they will not be weary. I mean, there's some things you don't have to go through in life if somebody will pray for you. If you want, listen to this. Now we're going we're gonna to make some declarations there. If you want this, if you want what God has given today, this prophetic anointing, if you want this, raise your arms high like this. And the reason the Spirit of God gave me this is because this is submission. This is submission. Ask God to manifest his power through you. 
There is an impartation, an activation, and a manifestation being released right now. Right now. Even now, the Holy Spirit is ministering to you, showing you who, how, and when to prophesy his word. Saints, just receive this activation. Let God's glory, teach, let God's Holy Spirit teach you and move through you, saints. Keep your hands up because we're going to, I, I know you say, brother, you know, I can't keep, well, do it. Remember, saints of God, you have been prepared for this time. All that you have seen, experienced, went through was so that the name of Jesus would be glorified. Saints, you are well able and you can take your mountain. You can set the captives free. Jesus is your Lord and Savior, the commander in you. His spirit lives in you, and you have already overcome. Your family has already overcome. Every mountain has fallen. Every lie has been destroyed. You will see the goodness of God in the land and in your lifetime. Declare this with me, saints. Jesus, fill me. Jesus, fill me. Use me. Use me. Change, me. Change me. I am willing Today I receive my impartation of your anointing. My activation of your anointing. The manifestation of your anointing. This is my season for prophetic anointing. Let it be all for the glory of God. And let the name of Jesus be exalted. Amen and amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! So the impartation has been activated. The activation of God's anointing. And the manifestation, saints, when you raised your hands, that was the impartation. The activation... Listen, now I understand if you have to leave, God will give it to you right now. But this activation comes when you come up and you get hands laid on you. That's the manifestation, the impartation. God's time, his time of opportunity, that's when it's going to start. As soon as you get it here, and if you believe in God, then it's going to happen right away. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But if it doesn't happen, if it seems like a day goes by, a week goes by, and you go, I haven't, I haven't seen the manifestation of it. Remember, everything is in God's time. He gave it to you. He'll give, he gave it to you, and he'll show you how to use it. And he'll remind you and let you know that it's his power that dwells in you. Remember the anointing that you have received from him abides in you. Let him pull that out. Just keep doing what you've been doing. Start going, stay, keep going to church. Keep reading your Bible. Keep praying. Hang out with people that believe what you believe. And when you hear something contrary to what God's word says in this world, say, that's not so. That's not me. That's not me. So I want to I close with this scripture. And I want to remind you that you're well able, saints. You did not come today because somebody invited you here. The Spirit of God drew you here because this, this message was and is for you. Those of you on live stream, it's for you. And God will honor his word and manifest it in your life if you receive it. Because that's the God he is. He's a God that transforms. Amen? Amen. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so again, saints, I release this word to you by the Spirit of God, knowing that he watches over it to bring it to pass. I would encourage you, if you didn't, uh, note, uh, get these scriptures down to just, as Charlotte, Minister Charlotte was speaking, Watch this over again. Watch it over again because I truly believe the anointing of God is always on the teachings that God gives his ministers here in this place. 
and it will activate and manifest whatever you need in your lives. Amen. So at this time, if you could just bow your heads, we're going to pray for the offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to say thank you for the power of your word in this place. I want to thank you that nothing is by might nor by power, but by your spirit. And Father, I thank you already that as your people that are called by your name, give unto you that which you have given them, Lord, that already the impartation, the activation, and the manifestation of pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall be manifested in their lives. I thank you, Father, already that it is done according to your word in Jesus' precious name. And all God's people say amen and amen. Hallelujah. I want to I wanna just bless my brothers and sisters on live stream and tell them that the anointing that is here is upon you right now also. Just believe God, saints. Believe God for what he says he's going to do, and it shall be done. Amen. Not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. So be blessed, my brothers and sisters, and highly favored in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus.